Before starting the lesson, try this warm up. For what sales amount will the employees earn the same salary? So take a look at the graph. Describe how employee one is paid. Describe how employee two is paid. So take some time to try this on your own. Pause the video and come back when you have your answer. For what sales amount will the employees earn the same salary? Well, this point of intersection is where they have the same salary. The, the, uh, they have the same salary of $1,000 when they have $10,000 in sales. So that's $10,000 is the sales amount where the employees get the same salary. Describe how employee one is paid. Well, employee one is the red line. Starts here, goes up. If I find the uh, uh, how much it goes up, or the rise, and how much it goes over, or the run, between two points on the line, then I can figure out the percentage of sales that the salary is. Okay, so from here to here, we go up $200 in salary, and we go over $2,000 in sales. So 200 out of 2,000 is 10%. So the employee earns 10% of whatever his sales are. That's called commission. So employee one gets 10% commission. Now, employee two is paid differently, starts at $400, and then increases from there. So if I pick two points on the line, see how much you go up and how much you go over, goes up 300 and goes over 5,000. So 300 out of 5,000 is 6%. So employee two earns $400 and then 6% commission on top of that. Okay, so uh, this leads into the lesson topic, which is rate of change. So uh, using the rate of change, we can solve problems uh, like we did above in the warm up. Okay, now rate of change, you may have heard the word slope. Okay, so rate of change and slope, they're kind of talking about the same thing when we're looking at a graph. Um, so you might have used both of those terms, rate of change or slope in previous math classes. So here's example one. A toll highway charges drivers based on the following rate schedule. 15 cents per kilometer for the first 50 kilometers, 12 cents per kilometer for the next 50 kilometers, and then 10 cents per kilometer for all kilometers over 100. Okay, so depending on how far you drive on this highway, you have to pay a certain amount per kilometer. So we need to figure out how much will it cost to drive 125 kilometers on this highway. Well, the first 50 kilometers, each kilometer is going to cost 15 cents. Then the next 50 kilometers, each kilometer is going to cost 12 cents. And then whatever's left over is going to, each kilometer over that is going to cost another 10 cents per kilometer. So when we do the math, well, for the first 50 kilometers, they're each going to cost 15 cents. The next 50 kilometers, each are 12 cents. Well, that's a total of 100 kilometers. We need 25 more kilometers, and they're each going to cost 10 cents. If we add all that up, we get $16. So it's going to cost $16 to drive 125 kilometers on this highway. Next question, draw a graph of distance versus cost. Well, I'm going to start by setting up my axes distance, cost, and for the first 50 kilometers, it's a constant rate of change, 15 cents for every kilometer. So I'm going to have a straight line going up 15 cents every kilometer. So I just have to figure out my endpoints. Well, for a distance of zero kilometers, you're not going to pay anything. For a distance of 50 kilometers, well, 50 times 0.15, well, that's $7.50. So at 50 kilometers, you're paying $7.50. It's a constant rate of change for the first 50 kilometers, so I can draw a straight line. Now, for the next 50 kilometers, you're getting charged 12 cents per kilometer. Well, 12 cents 
per kilometer for the next 50 kilometers, 0.12 times 50, that's six more dollars. So at 100 kilometers, I'm getting charged six more dollars than I was at 50 kilometers. You can see I'm increasing by a constant rate of change. It's just not as much as the first 50 kilometers. Okay, now everything beyond 100 kilometers, you get charged 10 cents per kilometer. So what I did was I just went up every 10 kilometers. So if it's 10 cents for each kilometer, then 10 kilometers would be a dollar. So if I go up 10 kilometers, I go up a dollar. 10 kilometers, one dollar. Okay, so that's how I can figure out the line for the rest. And of course, this line keeps going, so I'm going to put an arrow on it. It'll go on forever until the highway's done, and there's no more road left to drive on. Okay, so you can see for each distance segment, so for the first 50 kilometers, there's a certain rate of change. Then the rate of change changes for the next 50 kilometers, and then it changes again, has a different slope on the graph. Let's try another example. Bob measured the temperature of a solution during a chemical reaction. Okay, so here we have a graph, temperature of a solution. Here we have the temperature on the vertical axis and the time in minutes on the horizontal axis. We can see that the temperature starts here. It increases at a constant rate of change. Then it stops changing for 10 minutes. And then after that, the temperature cools not at a constant rate of change. Notice that it's a curve instead of a straight line. So that means the rate of change is not constant for this amount of time. Okay, so the solution heats up, stops heating up, and then cools down more gradually. Okay, so what is the rate of change for the first 10 minutes? Well, here's the first 10 minutes in here. We're looking at this section of the graph. So we want to know what the rate of change is. Well, rate of change, remember it's that slope. It's the rise over the run. So we're going to figure out what it is in degrees Celsius per minute. So if I analyze the graph, find the two points on the line, start here, end here. Well, the rise, well, it's going from 20 up to 100. That's a rise of 80 degrees Celsius. In how much time? 10 minutes. So if it went up 80 degrees Celsius in 10 minutes, 80 divided by 10, that's 8 degrees per Celsius per minute. So that's the rate of change. The temperature changes at a rate of 8 degrees Celsius per minute. Whenever you're writing a rate of change, make sure you have proper units. That's just a reminder. Now, from 10 to 20 minutes, well, from 10 to 20 minutes, that's this section of the graph. What's the rate of change? Well, is the temperature changing? No. It's not changing at all. So the rate of change is 0 degrees Celsius per minute. It's not changing at all. So that's a rate of change of 0. But we still have the same units, degrees Celsius per minute. From 50 to 80 minutes, that's a little trickier. From here to here. The reason it's trickier is because this is not a straight line, so it's not a constant rate of change. But we can pretend that it's a straight line, and if we find the rate of change of that line, then that is called the average rate of change. So we can see from here to here, from 50 to 80 minutes, the temperature decreased by 25 degrees Celsius over a span of 30 minutes, which corresponds to negative 0.83 degrees Celsius per minute. That would be the average rate of change in this section of the graph. Another thing I want you to notice is uh, over here, the temperature was increasing and that corresponded to a positive rate of change. Over here, the temperature was decreasing, which corresponded to a negative rate of change. So whenever you're writing a rate of change, keep in mind your positive and negative signs indicating whether it's increasing or decreasing. 
If it's not changing at all, then it's just zero, and it doesn't really matter if it's plus or minus. But increasing is positive, decreasing is negative. Here's another example. Bob flew an airplane. What does the rate of change represent? So let's look at the graph. This is flight path. Here we have altitude. What does altitude mean? Well, if you're not sure, altitude means the height above the ground. And we have time in seconds. So we can see over the span of time is altitude. Okay, so his altitude, uh, he starts at zero, so he's on the ground. And then uh, after a few seconds, he starts to go higher and higher. Then he levels off, then he goes higher and higher again, levels off, and then he decreases gradually until he lands on the ground again. Okay, so that's just to give you an idea of what this graph is describing, but what does the rate of change represent? So we have to look at the rate of what, what units the rate of change would have. Well, it's rise over run, so rise on the graph is a measure of altitude. Run on the graph is a measure of time. So meters per second. Meters per second. Well, that's a speed. So the rate of change represents the speed of his ascent or descent. And I know it's a speed because I look at the units. Well, it's in meters per second. That's a measure of speed. Calculate the rate of change for each section. So by each section, I mean, well, this part here, this part here, this part here, 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 and here. So I want you to pause the video and see if you can calculate a value for the rate of change for each of those sections. The last part is not a straight line, so you might have some trouble with that. We'll talk more about that when you get back. So pause the video, try it, and then come back. So these are the answers I got. For the first section, there's no change in altitude, so the rate of change is zero meters per second. In fact, every time the line is horizontal, the rate of change is zero meters per second. For this section though, from here to here, we are increasing 200 meters in altitude over a span of five seconds. So 200 divided by 5 is 20, so that's 20 meters per second. For this section, do a similar process. What's the rise? Well, it goes up 200 meters over a span of, well, from 25 to 50, so over a span of 25 seconds. So do 200 divided by 25, that's 8, 8 meters per second. Over here, because this is not a constant rate of change, because it's a curve, we can't get a specific value for this section. You may have found the average rate of change from here to here, and that's fine. You should get a negative number, though, because it's decreasing. Okay, so make sure your numbers are correct for these sections. Make sure this is negative value, and also Make sure you have the right units. Anytime you're asked for a rate of change, you need to have units. It's rise over run, so the vertical units divided by the horizontal units, meters divided by seconds in this case. Now part C, use words to describe his flight path. I already kind of did that, but now that we have some values, we can be more specific. So I just wrote, He's five seconds on the runway, takes off and climbs 20 meters per second for 10 seconds, then maintains altitude for 10 seconds, climbs 8 meters per second for 25 seconds, maintains altitude for zero, sorry, for 10 seconds, and then descends quickly at first, then gradually slows down until landed on the ground. So... When I'm asked to describe his flight path, I'm just going through each section and telling uh, what it means. So we're interpreting the, the numbers that we calculated for rate of change. 
I'm just going to go through the next part fairly quickly. All, all we're going to do is look at graphs and uh, analyze them. So here we have another test flight, altitude, time, and seconds. Okay, so uh, we're just using that graph to answer the question, which section has the largest positive rate of change? Is it section A, B, C, D, or E? Well, we know section A and section D have a zero rate of change. Section E is negative, so it's really between B and C. They, they are the only sections that have a positive rate of change. Which one is the largest? Well, obviously C. It changes the fastest. It goes up the most for the same amount of time. So we're going to say section C. Now the same graph, which section of the graph has negative rate of change? Well, we already talked about that one. Section E, it's the only one that's decreasing. Same graph. What is true about section E of the graph? The rate of change is positive? Nope. The rate of change is negative? Yes. The rate of change is constant? Well, it's a straight line, so yes. The rate of change is not constant? No, because it's a straight line. So both B and C are true about section E. Same graph. What is true about section D? So we're looking here. The rate of change is positive? Nope. The rate of change is negative? Nope. The rate of change is not constant? Well, it is constant because it's a straight line. The rate of change is zero? Yes. Both B and C, or sorry, C and D, no. Only D is true. Same graph. What are the units for the rate of change? Well, remember, rate of change is rise over run, meters over seconds, meters per second. Same graph. What is the rate of change for section A? Okay, section A. It's flat. There is no change at all. It does not increase. That's a zero meters per second rate of change. What is the rate of change for section C? So here we're at section C. I'll let you pause the video and try to figure that one out. Well, it goes up 300 meters in 20 seconds. So 300 divided by 20 is 15. It's 15 meters per second. And what is the rate of change for section E? I'll let you pause the video and figure that out. It goes down 400 meters in 50 seconds. That's negative 8 meters per second. Don't forget the negative. Finally, a different graph. Select the rate of change graph that matches this altitude time graph. Okay, I'm going to go by each section. The rate of change is positive. Then it gets bigger, but still positive. Then the rate of change is zero. Then the rate of change is negative. So which graph shows the rate of change being positive, small, then larger positive, then zero, then negative? This one. Don't get tricked by graph C here. The rate of change, yeah, it's positive, small, then larger, net positive, then zero. And then it's on the negative side of the graph, but this means that the rate of change is changing, not constant. But here we see a constant rate of change. Okay, so that's why we have a constant positive rate of change, then a larger po constant positive rate of change, then a constant zero rate of change, then a constant negative rate of change. This shows the rate of changes for each section of the graph. Same question, different graph. So I'll let you pause the video and see if you can figure this one out. It's B. A large positive rate of change, then a smaller positive rate of change because it's less steep, then a zero rate of change, and then a constant negative rate of change. Last one, different graph, but the same question. Which of these represents the rate of change? 
Pause the video and see if you can figure it out, then come back. This time it's C because we have a small positive rate of change, a larger positive rate of change than zero, and then we don't have a constant negative rate of change. So it's not this one. That would be a constant negative rate of change here. But this one, it's changing. It's negative rate of change, but it's, it's not constant. It changes. Anyway, that was uh, an exhaustive practice with rate of change. Hopefully you understand what rate of change is. Watch out for plus or minus signs. Watch out for units. Make sure you uh, look at the graph carefully to see if it's a constant rate of change or if it's uh, a curve instead of a straight line. Look out for all those things and try the practice questions now and let me know if you need help.